Mike Tedeschi, Wealth Management Advisor, Perspective Wealth Planning. With this week's market breakdown video, we're going to take a look at four major U.S. indexes as well. So take a look at the U.S. dollar as well as commodities. And today we are going to pay close attention to the advanced decline line on the S&P 500 as it made a new all-time high on Monday. And what historically that is meant for us when that happens. So let's jump right into it here. First and foremost, S&P 500 finally went and made that new all-time high. As we know, we had that nice area of support that we held in on this pullback, rally up to all-time highs. That looks really, really good right here. We had a little bit of weakness yesterday, but we're still clearly holding over that 45.50 zone. And uh, again, you know, all-time highs, kind of clear skies above. There's no resistance on the chart to the left-hand side. Things continue to look really solid when we pay attention to the S&P 500. The NASDAQ went and made a new high as well, but was not able to close over that zone. So I really would like to see the NASDAQ close here or above so we can get that kind of follow-through. Um, it ran into the resistance zone from... August and kind of held just underneath of it the last couple of days. So look for that follow through here. If the NASDAQ can follow through uh, and actually close at an all time high over the next couple of sessions, that would be a very, very good sign for us. Come in, we take a look at the Dow. The Dow, just like the S&P 500, made a new all-time high as well. Now, I don't really necessarily love the action that we had yesterday as we kind of fell back below that zone. But really, it's like this, right? Resistance, support and resistance are not numbers, they're zones. So you really just want to see the Dow hold essentially right here. That 35,000 level would be... Um, you know, really key and get back up over it because what you don't want to see happen is, is um, you know, six, seven months of sideways action followed by a breakout that could only hold on for one session and then it falls back underneath. That would be a false breakout if we can't get back up above this line and continue to follow through. So I am watching the Dow a little bit more closely here just to see if we can get back up over this level and continue our grind higher. And the other piece of this is the Russells just did not participate once again here over the last few sessions. So we had new highs on the S&P 500. We had marginal new highs on the NASDAQ, and we had new highs in on the Dow. And when we come in here and take a look at the Russell, really ugly action. Yesterday was down almost 2%, much uglier than the rest of the market. And it was doing it right from, again, this resistance zone that we've got in place for a while. So if the Russell's not ready to make a breakout here, can the rest of the indexes really continue to rip forward? Or are we just going to kind of stagnate up here towards these highs? That's really what we're paying attention to. Again, there's nothing wrong with this chart. We're kind of right back in the middle of the chart. Um, we've talked about it a lot this year um, because the Russell hasn't gone anywhere. As long as it's not breaking below, it's okay. I think the rest of the indexes can still uh, you know, continue to do well. But we really would like to see this participation because if we get this participation, then we have broad participation across all the indexes. That's the best of the best setup for the bulls. And so that's really what we're watching here as we go into um, the end of the year. Now, let's take a look at the U.S. dollar. Not a whole lot's changed there. We've talked about this many, many times at 94, 95 zone resistance for many, many years. We popped up into it. We fell right back down below it. And, uh, you know, we can put another line in on the chart that's been important for this year as kind of that inflection point. It's about 93.50 um, zone right here, still holding above that. I think if the dollar gets underneath of that level, then you could look for a fall back towards the middle of the range around that 91 zone. But for right now, it's just kind of trapped towards the higher end of this uh, box that we've been trading in for the last year and a half with heavy resistance over top. So not a whole lot to do in on that chart. Again, we continue to pay attention to it all the time because it's very important. You can see gold just kind of hovering around that psychological 1800 number. We're trading it right 1800 at the moment. Um, we really need to get up over that 1840 zone. That is the last major you know, resistance level that we've got from June, July, August, September see if we can break back up above that and really the market gets very interesting up above that 1900 zone we're not there yet we have talked about this a lot um, we just have not seen the participation out of gold that we would have liked this year now silver made that nice reversal off of that potential false breakdown it's having trouble at 25 so we ran into 25 the other day turned around and fell back down above 25 this chart gets a lot more interesting uh, platinum 
broke over that basically a thousand thirty level, which was really really good, and then we're right back under it in a few sessions. So. Yes, we put a lot of space between the low and to where we are right now, but we're just not continuing to head higher. Like we still have lower highs in place. And until that kind of changes in this market, it's really tough. When we look in at our palladium market, we're still trapped between 1,800 and 2,200 and back towards the middle, towards the bottom end of that range. Like we're either getting a break below or a break above in between. It's kind of no man's land and, and it continues to be that way. When we come in and we take a look at copper, copper tried to go up and make that new high and was knocked right back down, right back into the middle of that zone that essentially we've been trading in for almost the entire year, right? Since about uh, middle of February, we've been in between that basically 4 and 450 zone. We're right back in there. So, you know, an incredible move up last year, a lot of sideways action, a lot of digestion of those gains. Where that next move comes, that's to the upside. It's going to be very easy to go along with it. But, um, you know, we... We haven't really accomplished much of anything this year. We're going to continue to watch it, but we need to see a uh, breakout before we get really interested back in this market again. Now, I'm going to back this chart up here and look at it on a monthly time frame. So here's our oil chart. Oil you know, pushed up into almost uh, that 86 zone, fell back down a little bit from it. But you can clearly see when we look at this on a monthly time frame. Unless we have a really ugly last couple of days of the month, we're we should close over that 75 level, which would be the highest monthly close that we have seen since 2014. And that still gives us that, that potential to run up into that 90 zone, which is that next resistance area. So we pay very close attention to what's going on there. Gas was up over that 240 zone, fell back down. Right, highest monthly close uh, you know, before basically June of this year came all the way back you know to about 2014 as well back in this zone so we have been really hard to get over that 220 level for the last seven eight years um, so I mean if it closes right here it's still um, above that level but there is resistance at 450 and that's really what we want to see can we get and hold over that zone Nat gas look at the turnaround on this candle we talked about it and that where we close this month is going to be very important for me because every time that we have spiked up into this zone we have fallen back down very quickly and stayed down for for a long time uh, we came back we tested that five dollar zone rocketed back higher basically at that six dollar level if the month were to end right here it would be another highest monthly close um, you know, since 2009. So that would be a very good sign for the Nat gas market. We know this is super, super volatile. So, you know, be careful over there in this space. They call it the Widowmaker for a reason. Um, but that is a nice reversal, and the monthly chart is looking pretty solid there. For the first time in more than 90 days, the New York Stock Exchange uh, advanced decline lining is now sitting at record highs. All right, so that means more stocks are going up than are going down, and it's at the highest rate that that's ever been. So that is a very bullish sign, but what does that actually mean when we look at the data points? And we actually have a lot of them. We've got uh, 25 signals. Now, if you guys look at this, this does go all the way back to the 1930s. Two, two three months out, we have a 22 win out of 25 signal rate. Very much skewed in the bull's favor here. The average risk on that was about a percent and a half pull down, where the average gain on that was about five and a quarter percent um, to the upside. And, and that's something that you would expect when you're taking a look at the advanced decline lines. If more stocks are going up than are going down, that should be a good sign for stocks. And so, as long as we continue to have those strong breadth readings, markets trading up at those highs, a lot of them at highs. If we can just get the participation in on the Russell, then we've got all of the pieces that we need to have a, you know, a stellar end to the year. So technically, this market still looks really, really good. And um, you know, we're, we have a number of things that we're watching moving forward. And I will continue to keep you guys apprised of them. As always, if you guys want to reach out to me and talk anything about the markets, you can reach me by email, mtedeski at perspectivewealthplay.com, or you can give me a call, 814-580-9881. I look forward to hearing from you guys, and I will see you all next week. Take care.